By the age of 12 years old, I already had three albums. I became a TV host. I bought my first Jaguar when I was 15 years old. I had already known what I wanted to do. I had already known what I wanted to be. I wanted to win my first Grammy. I wanted to go international. July 1st, 2011, I got a phone call. Timbaland was looking for me. When I was young, I was just always singing. I would sing everywhere. So this is how my mom knew if I was sick is when I stopped singing. Isn't that funny? Music was probably my first language. <laughs> Other than my music memory, I don't remember anything else. My parents were former national athletes, so they know how important it is to have a coach, even when it comes to music. My dad is such a perfectionist. Every show, my dad would say, great job. But if I had a mistake, he would always discuss it with me. So I've never been like spoiled by parents who's just like, oh, you know, as long as you're famous. It's always been about improving to the next level. They put me in, you know, like vocal classes and dance classes. In one of those classes, there's like a talent search or something. And then they approached my mom. At one point, my mom asked me, if I wanted to have an album. Yeah, for sure, I want to I wanna have an album. So that's what I did. By the age of 12 years old, I already had three albums and did a lot of tours. My ride was just beginning. I became a TV host, kind of like the Indonesian version of a Mickey Mouse Club. And then I had a role in one of the most legendary character in Indonesia. <laughs> when I started to be an artist, that was the first time that I encountered or experienced hatred from people. I was so young. Some of my friends kind of like turned their back on me and bully me. I remember I started to cry. My mom, she said, if you want to take revenge, the best revenge is just to be better. And I know it sounds cliche, but man, did that hit me on the right spot. Just toughen up and be better. That was my first defining moment of my life. That's what made Agnes Mo Agnes Mo. You know what? I didn't know how much I was making. I kind of got the idea, especially because I knew that, you know, people talked about it, like everything is on the tabloid. Um, oh, you know, she's the highest paid or whatever. I kind of knew. I was like, oh, shake it off. Like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna think about it. If I knew how much money I was making, I was gonna change. And I didn't want that. I just wanted to do something because I wanted to do it. I wanted to focus on what's important, which is the love for music. Okay, if I wanna be a little bougie, just for like one minute. <laughs> I bought my first Jaguar when I was 15 years old with my own money, not with my parents' money. Mm. <laughs> now, that award, the Best Actress Award, because I think I was the youngest to ever receive um, that nomination. I was so proud because I was really young. I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, people like my show. <laughs> people like me, cool. And um, of course I was happy, but I got into such a huge um, problem. On one of the TV shows that I was the main lead, there was, you know, crazy, sneaky shit going on. They made me the scapegoat. 
So they said Agnes was being such a diva. The press kind of gave me hard questions and pushed you against the wall. I was an easy target. That's how I learned. No matter how nice you are to people, you can't control what they're gonna do to you. All you gotta do is just do you and, and be good to people. So my mom realized that it was time for me to be recognized not just as a child star. Once you're a child star, people will always remember that and they will always put you in that box. They would never look at you like you're an adult unless you do something to bridge that. After that, people started to accept me. Oh, she's not, she's not a child anymore. And that's when we decided to have another album coming out. known what I wanted to do, I had already known what I wanted to be. I was basically already the creative director of my album and I think the look was really rebellious. Street life, urban culture, just a lot of diversity, just fun, you know, just like the cool kids hanging out. Sixty percent upbeat songs and forty percent ballad songs. All the famous singers back then was either rock stars or in a band or singers who do ballad songs. There wasn't someone who do both, and I did that. <laughs> have goals, I love to be able to envision my next step. I told the press that I wanted to go international. Tabloids started to have this crazy headlines like arrogant Agnes. I, I didn't have any intention of me being arrogant whatsoever. It was really me sharing with you know the press and the fans, hey I wanted to go international. I think I wanted to win my first Grammy. Like I really need to do this. But when I said that I was being called arrogant. I couldn't say it because I was just an Indonesian. Because those people told me that I can make it, and now I actually want to make it happen. So I compiled this huge pink folder of all the names that I wanted to work with. And the first page, the first name in that binder was Timbaland's name. July 1st, 2011. I got a phone call. Timbaland was looking for me. He came into the studio and he said, What's up, Ag? And my heart was like dropped on the floor. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so nervous. Whatever we created in that studio was so genuine. You know, like it came out of our passion for music. <laughs> 